Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Today, we're gonna to be taking our Ender 3 and we're going to update the firmware to work with our BL Touch. But unlike last time, we're just gonna use Vanilla Marlin 1.1.9 bug fix branch. Stay tuned. All right, the first thing we're gonna have to do is go and fetch the Marlin firmware. So go to marlinfw.org, click download, and there's been a recent redesign on this page. You're on the download page. We're gonna download this one right here, 1.1.x bug fix. So this is, as it says, patches after the 1.1.9 release. Download this, I threw it on my desktop. Extract the zip file, <clears throat> and you will be presented with the following. Uh, what we're going to do before we open it in the Arduino IDE, we're going to go into Marlin, go to the example configurations, whoop, and in this case, we're working on a Creality Ender 3. So grab the config files that are pre-configured for your standard Ender 3 as a good starting point. Copy those and paste them back in the root Marlin folder here. Paste. We're going to overwrite, so place them. Good. With that done, look for marlin.ino. It's got the little Arduino icon, and that will open up in the IDE. Okay, first thing that I'm going to do in here, just make sure we select the correct board. So I've already plugged in my printer through USB, and we've chosen Sanguino as the board and the 18 mega 1284p 16 megahertz as the processor let's choose the port here in my case it's com4 all of our changes are going to be in configuration.h if we scroll down here this is the file that we copied from the examples directory so this should be already pre-configured for the options required for an ender 3. because the ender 3 is very space constrained uh, in comparison to something like a 18 mega 2560 based uh, board like the Sierra 10S or something, we need to strip out some things. So we're gonna get rid of the boot screen and the status screen image. Uh, I believe you can actually leave this one in, but I'm gonna remove it for now. And then we will uh, boot screen, status screen image. Okay, scroll down, oh, right here. We're not going to show the boot screen here either. Okay, so now we have no boot screens. So that saves us some space because there's basically little graphics that are in those. And then let's go to line 727. Okay, so we're using a BL Touch. Uncomment this line to activate that. And we'll define here what pin we're using for the BL Touch. If you've watched our previous video where we did the hardware install for the BL Touch, we chose to splice in to the red line on the ribbon cable. The red line on the ribbon cable used to be the beep, and it is pin 27. So we're going to define servo 0 underscore pin to be the number 27. So it will use that pin to activate the servo on the BL Touch. And then on line 776 here, we're using a mount that is just to the left side of the stock hot end assembly. And the offsets for this particular mount, because it is to the left of the assembly, it's negative. In this case, it's 40. And it is a little bit to the front. It is negative 10 millimeters. That's 10 millimeters to the front um, of the, the nozzle tip. And we will just leave this for now. Once we're done flashing, we're gonna go through the Z offset setting. Uh, if we go to line 975. Okay. So we're gonna use bilinear, 976 here, uncomment, Define auto bed leveling by linear. 
and I like to include this restore leveling after G28. So if you do an auto bed leveling and then you G28, which is home all axes, it will basically ignore the bed leveling mesh that it's just built. Um, this restores that mesh. Um, I believe people have M420S1 in their start G code to essentially accomplish the same thing here. Um, but I don't have to worry about adding that G code in with this option enabled. So I leave this enabled all the time. Uh, 984, oh, I've just done that, sorry. So let's flip to configuration advanced. And in here, we're gonna check for baby step. There you go. And on 753, make sure define double click for Z baby stepping is uncommented. So this allows you to quickly double press the scroll wheel to go and do Z baby stepping with a properly calibrated Z offset and a BL touch. You shouldn't need that, but it's nice to have that ability. And where you need to enable Z safe homing. So on 11, back in configuration.h, line 1141 or so, right here. So Z safe homing, just make sure, if you read the next couple lines, you can see what's happening here. It makes sure that when it's homing the Z, that it does so in the middle of the bed. So it takes the X dimension of the bed, divides it in half, and the Y and divides it in half, and uses that whenever you're doing a home all axes uh, G28. Um, that's just to make sure that your probe is on the bed when it is doing the Z homing. Um, if it did move to the very front corner of the bed in this case, um, the probe would actually be off the bed. And last but not least, around line 1453, there's a convenient option here for slim menus. So you could turn the menus entirely off if you wanted to here. But in our case, to make the last little bit of space necessary for this to fit, we're gonna uncomment this. So this removes, I believe it's the options for setting velocity and acceleration um, from your menus. Uh, there may be a couple other things missing, but uh, I tend to not miss them. And if I need to make any of those changes, I can do that with G-code by hooking a cable up to the printer or through my Octopi or Repertier server. So I think that's about it. If we do a verify, it will compile the software and ensure that it's gonna fit on the printer. So I got an error message here, um, and capitalization is important. So it says I must define servo zero underscore pin if I'm gonna use a BL touch, and I thought I had done that. But obviously, this is not correct. S-E-R-V-O zero underscore Pin. Let's try that. Verify. All right, so here we are a couple minutes later and it's complete. It's compiled, so that fix there was what we required. And you can see it is very, very tight. So as I mentioned early, maybe we could, um, you know, re-enable a couple features, but it's very unlikely that it's going to fit. Um, if we wanted to turn something on like Linear Advance, we're going to have to prune some more stuff from here for sure. But in my case, you know, with the Bowden setup, I don't really find a need for it or find that it actually makes that much of a difference for me. Uh, so I will now just upload this to the printer. All right, so I'm done with the laptop now and I'm gonna unplug from the printer. So the printer is off. And if we turn it back on, we hear the BL Touch activate twice. And now we'll take a closer look at what we have to do on the screen. Okay, so since we just flashed the firmware, I'm just gonna kind of restore the EEPROM default, defaults. Uh, so that is under, not prepare, it's under control. And it's under, we'll do load settings and then store settings. Okay. And so if I do prepare auto home, Okay, so we've just homed all axes. We saw it move to the front corner and then move to the center of the bed and the BL touch did its job. So now we need to set the Z offset. So that's the difference from where the BL touch senses versus how far off the bed the nozzle is at that time. Um, to do this, we're going to preheat everything to operating temperatures. You should always be doing your auto leveling sequence and your Z offset at temp. Uh, so I will go to prepare and I'll use preheat PLA, which in my case is doing 185 on the nozzle and 45 on the bed. 
So we're up to temperature now, and I think 185 is a little bit cold. So if I go to control, temperature, nozzle, I'm gonna put that at about 210, which is where I'm kind of a, a range of where I'd be printing PLA most times. And the bed here, I'm gonna do 60. The reason I am doing a hotter bed is we've thrown glass on top, and so 60 is the temperature under the aluminum plate. And I wanna make sure that it's um, hot enough on the top of the glass surface. Okay, we're just about at temperature now. And we can see here that it says that our Z is currently at 10. So if we go to prepare, move axis, we're gonna move the Z, and we'll move it down to where it thinks zero is. Now with this particular probe, uh, I'm sorry, probe mount here, we know that we have tons and tons of space before the nozzle is uh, crashing into the bed. If you're using a different mount, you may wanna be a little more careful when you're moving it to what it thinks zero is before you've set the offset. So in this case, we know we need the nozzle to be much closer to the bed. So control and motion. Inside control and motion, you see probe Z offset. It's currently set to zero. So if we set this offset to a negative value, let's say minus two millimeters, and then do an auto home again. Okay, so now it says the Z is at 12, which makes sense. We put negative two millimeters in there. And if we move the Z down to where it thinks zero is now, let's be extra careful here. We'll put it at two. So that would have been where we were before. Now if we move it down one more, We'll move it down 0.1 at a time until we get to kind of your standard paper drag distance away from the bed. Okay, so it looks like we're at plus one millimeter right now. So we're going to add one millimeter to what we set the Z offset to be. Go back to control, motion. And so we're gonna add one millimeter to negative two, which is negative one. Okay. And then we'll just verify one more time. We'll do auto home. Okay, we'll move the Z back down again. And this time should be exactly where we want to be. Just a little bit of drag on that. At this point, we're up to temperature. So we would be ready to send a print to this machine. Just making sure that we add a G29 into our start G code. So there you have it. It wasn't so bad taking base Marlin and flashing it on an Ender 3 and configuring it for something like a BL touch. You may notice that your axes move a little bit slower and that's because of the example configuration that we've used for the, End the Ender 3 has those speed values set. You could feel free to go in there and modify those as you see fit. Just don't go crazy on the Z axis speed because you can end up skipping steps and causing a whole bunch of headaches. And if you do mess something up, it's easy enough to follow these steps and go back to stock Marlin firmware. Uh, in the description below, I'll include the exact steps that I took in the firmware uh, modification portion of this video. I did kind of jump back and forth between some files uh, and I even made a mistake. Uh, so I'll have those steps written out for you as well as some new start G code that will include the G29 in the appropriate spot. So you can use that in something like Cura, which will do the purge line down the side like we always have, but it'll also do an auto bed leveling sequence after everything is up to temperature. Hopefully you found that useful. Remember, like and subscribe and leave a comment down below. Let us know what you'd like to see in the future and ring the bell to get notified when we upload more content like flashing the Ender 3. Thanks for watching.